Now, this is just horrific. Uber is being sued in the United States after hundreds of female passengers claim that they were assaulted by drivers on the ride-hailing platform. I feel sick to my stomach even telling you about this. A complaint, which has been filed by the law firm Slater Slater Schulman, says that it's representing 550 women who allege that sexual assaults took place in multiple states. Now, the filing includes allegations that female passengers were kidnapped, sexually assaulted, sexually battered, raped, falsely imprisoned, stalked, harassed, or otherwise attacked by Uber drivers. And this comes as Uber's just announced its planned relaunch right here in Israel. Well, joining us now to break down how Uber is responding to this and what this actually means for you if you want to use the platform or continue to use it is our analyst and I-24 News host, Ariel Margulit. So, you know, tell us a little bit more about this lawsuit. Well, first of all, as you mentioned, it's this uh, law firm that is submitting it on behalf of uh, uh, 550 women that they're representing uh, that have come uh, forward with horrific stories from the last few years of being either sexually assaulted or raped on Uber rides. And now the most concerning thing, Natasha, mm -hmm. is that Uber is well aware of this. In the last two years, Uber has been made, due to public pressure and media pressure, uh, aware of those allegations and has been brought to uh, some sort of liability uh, clause uh, under which it started releasing its own report on reports that it is getting from customers of Uber. And let's take a look at that data because these are not even women that have already filed a lawsuit. These are just reports that Uber is confirming that they have from passengers. We're talking about over 9,000 sexual assaults in the years 2017 to 2020. And that's when during the pandemic, the number of rides have dropped. Yeah, right. in 2019, 2020. If we're looking at rape cases, they say that there is more than 141 rape reports that uh, Uber itself has received from passengers and the police, of course, and 998 sexual assault incidents in 2020. And these numbers, Natasha, are just in the US. Uber is a company that operates all over the world and is now making its way back to Israel. It's just horrifying. You know, I actually remember back in 2014 when I was a college student hearing about a case in which a woman had been uh, sexually assaulted taking an Uber ride. And, and, you know, just on the onset of this company, a lot of females, a lot of women said, you know, do I feel safe getting into the car of a driver who I don't know how well he's he or she has been given a back check. What kind of security measures actually exist to ensuring that the people who are driving these cars, who could really just be anybody from the street, if you have a car, you can sign up for Uber, right? Yeah, uh, right. Who are these people? So what does Uber say that they're doing in response to this? Well, first of all, I think Uber is not saying much. They're saying that they're, of course, uh, looking at different models of operation. We saw that in recent entries to new markets in Europe, for example, Uber has been partnering with cab drivers that are registered. And that is, of course, uh, a move that is meant to uh, increase uh, transparency, to increase uh, uh, the ability to know more about the driver, and hopefully to increase safety for passengers. But this is basically the new model that they're operating in, and this is the model that they're bringing to Israel as well. So a few years ago, they were kicked out of Israel due to pressure of uh, the, the taxi lobby here in Israel um, that, uh, at the time, Minister of Transportation, Israel Katz, to come to. But, you know, we'll see how it works here with cab drivers. Obviously, Israel is not a country where you can let anyone take anyone on a ride and hope that it ends well. Right. I mean, listen, I think that most people around the world want there to be ride sharing platforms like this in existence because it does bring the cost down of, of taking a taxi for the average person. But at what cost? Right. Yeah. At the end of the day. I personally do not feel safe getting into an Uber car, hearing about these numbers, especially those reports from Uber. We don't actually know about, you know, numbers from outside sources. This is what Uber is reporting, and they do obviously have a reputation that they need to maintain. Um, I guess, you know, the question is, is, are we going to see a larger global response to this, or do you think this is going to end up being swept under the rug? I guess what uh, Uber is doing in Israel and in some countries in Europe could become their modus operandum. Uh, uh, elsewhere in the world, um, these numbers is not something that a company that is public can, uh, you know, keep 
uh, defending for a long time. Uh, more than 550 lawsuits uh, at the moment against uh, Uber. Uh, actually, more than 550 complaints, but only, by the way, around 24 or uh, so cases were actually brought to court so far, but you know, some are still pending. Um, I think we might see more from uh, Uber in response. For example, one thing that was brought up in the lawsuit as a possible remedy was to uh, operate these cars with cameras installed inside the passenger seat and the driver's seat so you're able to see what's happening in the car during the drive and that of course may prevent some predators from doing whatever they want on these vehicles again here in israel uber is returning after a few years away but they're returning to operation with registered taxis similar right. to the get model here